Oh, here's a little video to show the final steam test before delivery of the three and a half inch gauge GWR Bulldog class locomotive. We recently sold this one to a gentleman in Scotland who's new to steam. Um, so this video is going to act as a little guide so that he knows the basics of how to use it. Um, this first shot inside the back head shows Finn pushing the reverser into full forward gear and then opening the regulator to release the steam from the regulator through into the cylinders and obviously the wheels go forwards. Um, the very basics of how you, you make it go. It also has a whistle which Finn... We'll show you there. The design is a 440, so there's four coupled driving wheels, which the rod is linking together there, and four um, bogey wheels at the front. Um, it was typical of the sort of general design in the early 1900s that the Great Western Railway used for express passenger work. Um, this is Finn putting some coal in. It's anthracite beans, which is small pieces of anthracite. And if we have a good look inside the firebox, you can see the smaller fire tubes that just take the heat through, and the two larger tubes at the top have what's called a superheater back through them. They're called superheater flues. And it basically takes the regulator steam between the regulator and before it gets to the cylinders, and it puts it back through those tubes to superheat that steam so it works better in the cylinders. The copper handle that you can see sticking out of the tender there is for the hand pump for getting water in, which we'll have a look at later. This is a view from underneath the firebox, which you can see all the valve gear is inside this locomotive. The cylinders are inside between the frames. Um, a good sign of whether an engine is timed well, the timing for the cylinders is good, is if it'll run slowly. Um, this one, as you can see, runs slowly in both reverse and forward. The valves and cylinders require a thicker steam oil that's mechanically pumped in. Uh, and there's a yep. reservoir under the front of the smoke box here with a single again. cylinder pump in it that pumps that in, linked to the valve gear to allow it to pump every time the wheels are going round. The pressure gauge on the left shows how much steam pressure is in the boiler and the safety valve in the middle on the brass safety valve bonnet um, allows the steam to escape when it reaches working pressure, in this case 90 pounds per square inch. So the safety valve releases all the excess steam so it can't get too much pressure in the boiler. This is the hand pump we talked about earlier, pumping cold water from the tender into the boiler. About half a glass full there. Cold water obviously kills the steam pressure, so turning the blower on, as Finn's doing there, forces a jet of steam up the chimney, pulls some of the air out of the smoke box, the black portion of the front of the boiler with it, forcing a vacuum, and that in turn pulls air through the fire, makes it burn hotter to replace the steam. That's the water pump, which is under, underneath the engine between the frames. That's also pumping water in a constant circuit between the tender, through the pump, back to the tender again. If you close what's called the bypass valve, it can't get back to the tender and it's forced into the boiler. Another way of getting water into the engine. The third way on this locomotive is the injector. You saw Finn turning the water valve on there, which lets water dribble through the injector, which is actually hidden behind the rear footstep of the engine. And then turning the steam valve on up the top of the cab there, forces steam into the injector. The water runs a little faster until it reaches the correct velocity to pick up the water. And you'll see the water therefore starts to slow down and drip and dribble. At that point, the injector's got hold of the water and it's injecting it into the boiler. You can trim the water back a little bit just to stop that dripping and the overflow. Disposing of the engine at the end of the day, you pull the pin out that you just saw Finn pulling that holds the ash pan and grate, push it from the inside and that's the grate you can see that had the fire on it and the ash pan that caught the ashes dropping out through the bottom. There's no longer a fire in there, so there's no danger of damaging the boiler anymore with too much heat and too little water. So you operate the blowdown valve with a spanner, Finn's opening it there and essentially what that does is it opens a hole in the bottom of the boiler and allows all that hot steam and water which is now extremely salty because you've essentially distilled the steam off leaving a concentrated solution of salty water behind and it's important to blow it down so that that salt doesn't stick to the copper boiler and, and cause you problems with, with scale later in life. Um, you can see the pressure is reducing now, it's down to about 40 psi and it'll gradually get slower until the boiler's empty. Well, there we go. Hopefully that's a, a useful user's guide for the new owner and a nice little introduction to you for some of the smaller locos that we run so that you can see roughly how they all work. Thanks for watching.